And if you wanna live the good life, well, this is what it looks like. We've been a band for 15 plus years now. Started the band in my garage when we were in high school. And avoiding responsibilities ever since. <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you know, for us it is rad because we grew up with Dirty Heads. Like we've been playing shows with them for like literally since our band started. Yeah. The first shows we ever played were at the clubhouse and Dirty Heads. And every time they came back to Arizona, they would allow us to be the openers on the show because they knew we'd bring our friends. We had like a hundred drunk friends at any given moment that were willing to show up. Yeah. Us. And, and uh, as we'll they be. grew, they would continue to help us out. And then like come 2014, they brought us on our first like national tour. We'd done like a small couple, little bit of touring, but these were like, first time we're playing massive venues and there was catering and like stuff. It was just a whole different world for us. And you know, just over the years, they've been there to kind of help throw us a bone when we needed it. And, and kind of, they've always sort of just been there for us. So it was kind of like they opened this door for us to like, you know, take off and, and do some things. Years ago, Jared would always mention to us like, hey, if you guys want to write some songs together, let's jump in the room. It's interesting to see the similarities that Jared and Andy have, and Andy always very much so looked up to Jared in a way that he didn't with other bands that we've ever really toured with. Jared was kind of the dude where he would kind of get a little nervous around when we played shows with them because he was like really inspired by him, you know? For that to come full circle and us be sitting in the room with Jared and Duddy making new music for Catastro. For me, it was really cool to just watch Andy like truly enjoy that and like be in the all in the ring together. Yeah. Anytime that we've made good music together, I think there had to be a period before that where we could just hang out as friends and not even talk about the band and not talk about music because I think that would just fill our cups up just our souls to like just be friends, hang out, get that right first. And then that seems to give us the ability to like make better music, I feel like. Yeah, like things had kind of gotten a little stressful, you know, like in our area. And so it, every time we ever hang out, it's generally like you're talking about business, eating, shows, what we're doing wrong all the time, where it is like a very negative, not negative, but like you always have to kind of pick apart everything to get better. And then we were just in this area, we're just, we're just hanging out, having some Yeah, just relax and not be too critical of what was going on. Yeah. We had all these different like small wins that were like stacking up and it just felt good. Our last album had done better than any album we had done before. We played like this thing at the Suns Arena. The for, shows were yeah, it shows like oppor yeah. weird opportunities started coming our way and you could just feel it just felt like something was happening. You know? Yeah, it was all paying off. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, getting in the studio with Jerry and Duddy was like icing on the cake. We're like, we're doing everything right, clearly, because it's what we wanted. And we just had this feeling that we were about to make something like really dope. All this stuff was building up for us to just kind of finally reach that point. We've been always felt like we were inching towards, you know? The last show that we played with Andy was at Red Rocks. He was just so hyped. He was so hyped on the future. He's like, Strass, we're doing it man we're playing with these huge artists we're about to go on tour with atmosphere and iration for the whole summer and then we're gonna be in the studio with jerry and duddy writing with the dirty heads like it's like this is crazy a couple months after we lost andy we started opening up all the sessions and opening up all of andy's vocal comps like looking at all the takes seeing what's usable what's not that in itself was an insane challenge i don't think three of us understood like how that make us feel like just hearing his voice all day long again and like diving back into it there's still an aspect of it though that he was like in the room helping us with it this is going to feel different working on this one than the other one because there's less to work with so it's more of a challenge yeah well yeah. but sometimes that's but easier it, too but it's yeah. gonna be fun yeah be fun. sometimes the real challenge is when there's sick shit in there and you're just like how do i not fuck up this already cool thing yeah i don't think it needs a bridge i think it'd just be post raw or hook i think a little bit of organ could be cool in a say, certain yeah. bar or something you know yeah. Yeah. Right. When that guitar comes in, just a yeah. kind of pair of things. It was so fresh for us still to like be in there for 13 hours a day and only listen to his voice and your music and everything that is like, when it's that fresh, all the happy times are some of the hardest times to like remember. A couple months after we lost Andy, we got back in touch with Jerry and Duddy. We were like, you know, hey, can you guys help us finish this song? And immediately they were to for sure. And he goes, you know, I think I might be able to like talk to our songwriter and producer, this dude, Ryan Ogren and like might be able to hit him up and see if he'll like work with you guys, I don't know. Andy records the hook two days before he passes away. And then months later, Jared and Duddy help us finish the song. And they're able to write their verses with the perspective of what a good time is all about and like what's really important in life, you know? And like each of their verses touch on that. And I think in a lot of ways, the song represents 
not needing a lot in life to have a good time and lay with things that really matter, like the people that you really care about. It's been overwhelming the amount of support and love that's come in. Strengthen the emotional connection for sure between yeah. us and the fans. I mean, we're, we're super blessed to have the strength of like such an incredible fan group and through, you know, the few events we have thrown since Andy Pass and just that outpouring love and support from people all over the world flying into Arizona to see us just make sure that we're okay and stuff has been crazy. So it's going to feel good to like kind of give a little gift back to them. Just seeing like Andy's family and the way they've surrounded everything with this track. It's definitely for the fans, but it's also for Andy's family. This song, Good Time, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Andy's dad's favorite song. It's like one of his favorite songs. Yeah. So it's a lead with, you know, that being the first thing that people hear since everything that's happened. Yeah, this will be cool. To me, it's a stripped down, simple, fun song, and it's about looking at this stripped down, easy, fun times that you have, you know. You know, for this track, I just wanna see people enjoying their time with their friends and their loved ones, and I hope it brings them the same feelings it brought us when to make the track, and yeah. You know, it's about good time, the lyrics are there. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's not like, in our past, we've done a lot of introspective, like kind of, more deeper and this one was just like hidden meanings and stuff i think this one's pretty yeah it's just about nice. having a good time you know for those that don't know us or don't know our story they can hear it and you know just understand what it's about and for those that do know us and do know our story and what it took to actually get that song finished um i think they'll get a totally different meaning out of it it signifies more than just a song just because of everything we've gone through to get to just this finished piece of music. You know, we've been working on this for a while now. It feels good to finally get to a point where people are gonna hear it and see what we've actually been doing and what's kind of kept us focused and kept me in a better headspace. Initially, it was really difficult to just, you know, try and finish good time and figure it out. I think after the fact, it's just been kind of giving us some closure. Like what Tanner just said, it's been healing for the three of us to be able to work on this song. Our fans, haven't gotten that yet. So for us to now give our fans what has helped us, that's rad. <laughs>